Welcome, everyone. Hope you're doing well. I hope you're not as nervous as I am. I am. I'm nervous. I'm always nervous before I go live. There are so many things that could go wrong here. I could mess up in my teaching. The microphone. Let's talk about the microphone really quickly. I'm worried about the microphone. This lesson may end abruptly. When something ends abruptly, it means just like that. The microphone could cut out on me because it has done it before. But I want to say hello to a couple people. Amin is here. How are you? Yawin is here. Welcome. Constantine, how are you? Veronica is here. Freddie Wolf is here from France. Yulia, welcome. Hansa, Harry. Can't forget Harry. I saw Samer in here too. Welcome everyone. Today's lesson is about birds and nuts. I tried to pick a really strange, weird topic for these weird, strange times we're living in. A very different world than we're living in, than we were living in. Um, hey Elena, how are you? Than we were living in just a week ago. So Let's forget about what's going on in the world for about an hour and learn some English terms, phrases, phrasal verbs, slang that we use with birds and nuts. Before we do that, though, I got to give a couple shout outs. One shout out I can't give, but I would like to welcome Ibrahim. He became a member I don't think he's in the chat, but he has been with the channel for since it started, like two years ago. So here you go. Welcome to the club. I think he's been here before. I'm not sure, but welcome. New member. Make sure you check the members tab for the Discord, the members chat, and the bonus videos. And I also would like to give a shout out to Sita. She left a super chat on the last lesson, but that last lesson that last lesson was about a rather grim topic. So I didn't want to do this during that lesson, but we can do it now. Oh, thank you so much for the super chat. And there was one other super chat before we started. But that person said, don't shout me out. She's in the chat right now. Thank you. No shout out. Let's get on to the lesson. We're going to be talking about birds and nuts. Look at this bird. Do you know that bird? It's a cardinal. And cardinals are one of the birds that actually do not migrate. They don't migrate. So that is hopefully one of the first English terms I can teach you. Let's look at this sentence. There are actually two sentences here. Maybe you can practice shadowing with this. I will read it nice and slow and clear. Maybe you can use it for shadowing. Cardinals are a type of bird that do not fly south for the winter. We also call flying south migrating. So depending on where you live, I live in the north where it's cold. Birds like to fly south in the winter. So if you're living in, I know, Poland, Ukraine, Russia, we all kind of share the same parts of Germany, all share the same climate. And I'm sure we have birds that come here in the summer, they sing really nice songs, but the winter is too cold, so they migrate south. Hope that helps. That's our first bird, cardinal. So sometimes in the snow, you will see something bright red. It could be a cardinal. Fly south. That term right there. We also call that migrating. Migrating means moving from place to place. We also have something in the United States called migrant workers. Migrant workers. Those are people who will pick 
fresh fruit and vegetable, and they will move around the country depending on where the best place is to pick fruits and vegetables. Fly south, migrate, migrant workers. The next one, I hope this is new for you, snowbirds. We have snowbirds in the United States. Take a look at these people. What do they all have in common? They're old. Snowbirds are old people. Snowbirds will live in the north when it's nice and warm. I live in Maine, a state that's in the northern part of the United States. So older people will be around here in the summer. But once it starts getting cold, they go to places like Florida or Arizona I have a video coming out this week, a lesson about rain, and it's in a desert in Arizona. So here's another sentence that I hope will help you with your English. Snowbirds do fly south every winter. Many older retired people will fly to Florida or Arizona. So instead of having like one large house, these older retired people will sell their bigger house and buy two smaller houses, one in the north for the summer, one in the south for the winter. And again, Florida and Arizona are very popular states for this to happen. And I'm pretty sure, hey, Luke, what's going on? Hey, Danny, how are you? And I'm pretty sure that at least parts of Europe have snowbirds. I have heard of snowbirds in parts of Europe. Do you have snowbirds in your part of the world? I can imagine in Brazil, in South America, where it's winter um, when we have summer, that some people might fly north. I don't know. I don't know. Is that is that a thing? down there. Hey, Ario, Alex, how are you? I think I saw Jake. Jake's in here. Welcome. Welcome. And I think I saw Audie in here. How are you? Hope everybody's doing well in Thailand today. Oh, and, and Jamie Watson, my wife is here. The next one we have for you, that's a pigeon. It's a pigeon. If you go to places like New York City, there will be so many pigeons around. Now, I mean, not an ugly bird. In fact, it's rather pretty. It's not, it's not an ugly bird. But when you go to New York City, they are all around. These pigeons. And do you know what pigeons do? Just like every animal, they go to the bathroom. So... A few pigeons I don't mind. Lots of pigeons I do mind. And I think Venice, if anybody is here from Italy, I think um, they're known for having lots and lots of pigeons too. I'm just checking in. What is a snowbird? Aria, we just talked about that, my friend. From Indonesia. Snowbirds. They are old people. Old retired people. They live in the north. See, retired means they don't have a job. So they can live in the north when it's beautiful out and get the heck out of the north, fly to places like Arizona and Florida when it's cold up here, just like birds do, migrating birds. The next one. This is kind of what started this whole English lesson. I was out in Arizona. And there were ravens out there. I had never seen a raven. I just thought they were really big crows. But apparently, they are different. Do I know how they're different? No, not exactly. I'm an English teacher. I don't really need to know each, every, each and every bird name. Just like learning English, you don't need to know a pigeon from a crow from a raven. 
I mean, it helps, but you can just say a bird. You can just say a bird. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. That's what really good English learners do. If they don't know the exact name of a word, they might use three or four words to describe that word. And I know that many of you do that. So since I am an English teacher, I'm not an ornithologist. We'll talk about that later. That's someone who studies birds. The way I look at it, ravens are bigger than crows. I don't know about you, but those birds scare me a little bit. On the left, right under crow, is a picture of a crow. On the right, it's a picture of a raven. I mean, they're both black, but I do think ravens are bigger than crows. I mean, that's what I think. Now, we have a term in English that we say, and that is, as the crow flies. As the crow flies. What that means in English is that if you could be like a bird and get to that destination, it would be a lot quicker. But since we have cars, you may have to go around and it might take you longer. So let's think of you're going to a new city and you want to find the grocery store. A person may tell you, well, you go here, you go there, you go there. And you might say, well, that sounds like it's really far away. And they might say, well, as the crow flies, it's only one mile away. So as the crow flies means the actual distance that a place is away from you without all the winding roads. So if you ever hear that in English, well, as the crow flies, it's not that far away. Like if you could get rid of all the trees, all the buildings, and you could just walk in a straight line, that's what it means as the crow flies. You might hear a native English speaker use that. So as the crow flies, um, my school is only five miles away from me. It's, it's a long walk, but because there's a river between my city and the city my school is in, I have to go all the way around. There are only three bridges that connect those two cities. So my commute is, is much longer. If I could just get there like a bird flying straight, wouldn't be so bad, but, but, but I'm not a bird. The next one, seagulls seagulls you may have these things if you live near the ocean two places we have seagulls in my town and i don't live all that close to the ocean as the crow flies i live about 20 miles from the ocean but to get in a car it would probably take me 40 minutes to get to the ocean. But as the crow flies, I'm not that far away. But we have seagulls in my town. One, the dump. I've actually talked about the dump in a previous English lesson. It's where all of our trash goes. Seagulls love the dump and they love Walmart. One of our big stores. If you go to Walmart, you are going to see lots and lots of seagulls. Mega, how's it going? You want to see American crows? Yeah. I mean, they're everywhere. They're everywhere. Okay. I want to tell a story too, Fayez. Hope I'm saying your name right. This is true. I want to tell a story and I actually have a sentence. Fayez says, I wonder that whether seagulls will eat a bagel around the world because somehow they eat bagels in Turkey. I'm not sure if you saw my uh, lesson that I released earlier this week. I made minimin or shushuka. The minimin's a little different, but I think it's the national breakfast of Turkey, and it is good. So if you want to learn some cooking terms, check out that lesson. Oh, no. You adore seagulls? Okay. I hate seagulls. <laughs> I'm sorry. Because... 
like Fayez says, they will steal your food. I have a um, sentence here for you. If you want to practice shadowing, be careful when you go to the beach. A seagull could swoop down, steal your food. Swoop down. That might be a new English phrasal verb for you, but it means to go down really quickly. Swoop down. Birds will usually do that. And a seagull could swoop down. You know, let me fix this. I want to, I want to, this is the next one. I want to put an and there. Swoop down and let's be, let's be perfect here. Be careful. When you go to the beach, a seagull could swoop down and steal your food. Yeah, that sounds better. I could have put a comma after down, but that's that's perfect. I like that better. Yeah, so one time when my family and I were at the beach and our children were little, you know, little kid, two-year-old little kid enjoying a, a bagel. I can't remember what the food was, but and the, the seagull literally swooped down and took his food. What? Where'd he come from? So yes, in the United States, we also have that problem. You need to be careful of those seagulls. Let me check the chat here just to make sure I'm not missing anything. Freddie Wolf, what's that? Some say when the crow flies over a poor area that they will fly on their back in order not to see the poverty on the ground. Okay, I haven't heard that, but uh, interesting, interesting. Oh, geez. Hey, Turkey Barack, how are you? Lots of pigeons in Turkey. Yeah, I mean, a couple birds here or there, I love them. When you have too many, though, they can be what we call in English a nuisance. Anything that bothers you a little bit. You could call it a nuisance, but I would call a lot of pigeons, a lot of seagulls, a nuisance. Would they ruin your day at the beach? Probably not. At least, at least on my beaches. We just have enough that they are a nuisance. They're not a huge problem. Just watch out for your food. All right. Hey. Sardor, I've never seen a seagull in my life. Well, that's good. That's maybe good. I, I wish I hadn't seen one either, but I mean, they're actually kind of pretty birds. They're kind of pretty. They're just a nuisance. They can be a nuisance. What's the next thing here? Turkeys. All right. I want to apologize. All of the vegetarians in the audience, if you're watching now, I apologize, but we have this national holiday here in the United States. You may have heard of it. We call it Thanksgiving. And most of the time, turkeys are often served as the main course at Thanksgiving. Mm. Turkeys. Too bad. Poor turkeys. Now, once a year, you can learn this new term and it's pardon pardon once a year our president will pardon one turkey and when you are pardoned like it's like a criminal if you get a pardon that means you don't have to have a punishment if you get pardoned so i'll read that sentence one more time Turkeys are often served as the main course at Thanksgiving. What our president will do this year in November, President Joe Biden, if he's still alive, he's getting kind of old, but um, in November, he will pardon a turkey, meaning he will say to that, I, I promise this is true, he will say to that turkey, you do not have to be eaten at Thanksgiving. He will get to keep his life, that turkey. Yeah, once a year. That's a tradition we have in the United States. The American president will pardon a single turkey. 
that turkey gets to live until maybe next Thanksgiving. I don't know. I don't know if it's a pardon for life. They can never be eaten at Thanksgiving, but yeah. And we all kind of laugh at it, Like, but it's a tradition. I promise you. Has anybody in the chat, please just put yes or no. Have you heard of the American president pardoning a turkey for Thanksgiving? Please just in the chat, put yes or no. I'm hoping somebody says yes, because it does sound like I'm making a joke, but there's no joke here. SV27 shadowing. Okay, good. Little bit of pressure. I need to make sure I pronounce everything perfectly. Okay, Veronica, few. You have heard of the president pardoning a turkey. Looks like Freddie has too. Good. Okay. Oh, and Audie has too. Okay. Okay. And SF SV27 says, yes, I watched on the news last year. Okay. I see, I'm not making it up. But when I was saying it, it sounded like a joke. President Biden going on the lawn of the White House, picking a turkey and saving its life. All right. Semra, I'm glad I could teach you something. All right. And it looks like, hey, Constantine, I see some people helping other people out in the chat with their English. Perfect. Love it. Awesome. All right. The next one, this thing. Oh my goodness. Is a vulture. I don't know if you've ever heard of this bird or not, but take a look. They look like villains. They look like villains from a Disney movie or something. These vultures, they are big birds. And they are scary, at least to me. So take a good look at a vulture. Take a good look at a turkey. In my opinion, not a good looking bird. Rather ugly bird. And behind this turkey, the beautiful scenery, but the turkey itself pretty ugly vulture even uglier and we also have this thing called a turkey vulture it's a type of vulture and it is scary i used to live in alabama that is a state in the southern part of the united states and me and my friend were driving on this country road not a lot of cars on that road, not a lot of people. And then when we went around the bend, that's kind of where the road curves a little. When we went around the bend, there were a bunch of turkey vultures in the road. Big birds, big, ugly birds. I think an animal had gotten hit and they were just standing there looking at us. We surprised them and they didn't move. I was so scared. I had never seen turkey vultures before. And my friend was laughing because he thought, you know, who's never seen a turkey vulture before? Well, I had never seen one and it scared me quite a bit. And my friend stopped the truck. No cars on the road. We didn't have to worry about being hit. I'm like, go, go. Those things are nasty. Luckily, he did you know, keep moving with the truck. But for a minute, I was face to face with one of these turkey vultures. Just nasty. Nasty things. All right. Looking through the chat here. Just talking about birds today. All right, Nicole says, I'm not a big fan of turkey. <laughs> to be honest, they are also ugly. See, and a scary bird. Nicole, I totally agree with you. I totally agree. Oh, Carla has to go. Hey, ooh, good luck at the dentist. I hope you don't have any cavities. All right, the next one here. Getting into um, some parts of the bird. Some birds have beaks. You can see on the left, 
that bird has what we would call a beak. We're going to talk about a duck here in a minute. That is a duck on the right, and they have bills. But here's the thing. I know that there are a lot of good English speakers in the chat, and I'm saying that, you know, I don't even know if you need to learn the words beak and bill in English. Now, if you're going to be working with birds, you know, of course, you might want to know that. Semra is in the chat. She's a veterinarian. If she ever has a bird that comes into the office and it speaks English, you may want to say some of the English terms. Probably be the owner that spoke English, but who knows? Parrots. Not a bird that we are covering today, but they speak. So you might not need to know beak, bill, what's the difference? Hey, when in doubt, take a look at this. When in doubt, just say the bird's mouth instead of beak or bill. And I'm sure you do this, but if you are learning English and you have too many vocabulary words, just try to use more words than that one word. So it's great if you know beak. That's what we call a bird's mouth. But if not, just say, hey, use the words you do know. Whoa, that bird has a fish in its mouth instead of that bird has a fish in its beak. I mean, if you want to go way advanced, perfect. If not, just use simple vocabulary. I do see a lot of um, English learners trying to use really big vocabulary. You know, be careful. A lot of times when we are just chatting to native English speakers, we use the simplest vocabulary of all. Now, we try to eliminate syllables from our words. Syllables are those little word parts, like word, one syllable, seagull, two syllables. Yeah. Americans, when we speak to each other, we're usually pretty lazy. We try to say the easiest thing possible. Now, if you're studying for the TOEFL exam or the IELTS and you have a job that depends on bigger vocabulary words, well, that's a different thing. But when we're just speaking to our friends, the simpler, the better. The next one, one of my favorite animals. I'm sure you have seen one of these. I'm sure you have a term for it in your language, but this is the duckbill platypus. Duckbill platypus. Let me make this thing bigger. Look at that thing. Is that, that's a real animal. I'm sure you have seen the duckbill platypus. Pretty, pretty cute. Ah, okay. I'm looking through the chat here. Freddie Wolf says, what's the meaning of nasty? Nasty is a great word. If you don't know this word, it can describe almost anything bad. So... Let's say somebody is riding their bike and they fall and maybe they get hurt. Maybe they get a road rash, we call it. Maybe their whole arm gets bruised. You could say, ooh, that was a nasty fall. Ooh, that's a nasty bruise. You could try some food. Miniman, that's not nasty. That's not bad at all. That's good food. And when I talked about those birds being nasty, I was talking about them being ugly. So nasty is a word you can use in a lot of ways. Great question. Great question, Freddie. One animal that I do not find nasty is that guy, the duckbill platypus. Very cute. Let's um, practice here a little bit. A little shadowing maybe for you. Unfortunately, the duck-billed platypus is facing extinction. That's a, that's a hard sentence to say, right? Unfortunately, the duck-billed platypus is facing extinction. So sometimes you will hear duck-billed platypus or you will hear what I wrote in the comment, the duck-billed platypus. 
And in between duck and build is something we call a hyphen. That little line in the middle of duck and build is called a hyphen. Let's check the chat to see if there are any, any questions. Whoa, look at this. Look at this. Semra with the big brain. Platypus is a small amphibious mammal, Brent. Amphibious. Oh, amphibians. Amphibians are uh, so interesting. Okay. Just because Semra mentioned it, let's talk about amphibious. Anytime you see that word, think water. Think water. So an animal that's amphibious will go in the water. Boats could be described as amphibious, but a lot of times when you're talking about uh, the military or war, you might hear an amphibious uh, an excuse me, an amphibious mission that would involve some kind of water. Mammals, yeah, mammals. Uh, that's what you know. People, you probably have a different word in your language, but people are mammals. Mammals usually give birth to live animals. You know, when the babies come out of humans, they're they're alive. A duck. Think about a duck. Yeah. When animals, when ducks have babies, they're in eggs. So the duck platypus is one of the few mammals that lay eggs. You may know that already, but there's a little English there for you. Hey, it looks like Maria's in the house. Argentina. Welcome. Where are you? Feather. We're going to get there. We're going to get there. The next one. Claws and talons. Claws and talons. Let's make this bigger. You see where those arrows are pointing to? That bird on the left? I think it's a crow. We might say that bird has claws. But that eagle, that bald eagle on the right, that looks like a talon. That looks like a talon. Now remember, I'm not somebody who studies birds. Those are called ornithologists. Look at that. That's pretty hard to pronounce, isn't it? Ornithologists. Let me read this sentence for you. In my opinion, talons are more dangerous than claws. But remember, I'm an English teacher not an ornithologist. So there might be some scientific reason that talons and claws are different. But I don't care. If I see something big and scary on a bird, I might say, whoa, that's a talon. If I see a little bird with just something that doesn't look like it could hurt me, call it a claw. If you don't know what those things are called, you can say, whoa, that bird has big feet, right? You don't need to learn all of these technical terms for English. You can just keep it simple. Well, that bird looks like it has a fish in its feet. That works. We'll know what you're talking about. Claws and talons. Let me read that sentence one more time. In my opinion, talons are more dangerous than claws. But remember, I am an English teacher, not an ornithologist. I said I am, didn't I? Instead of I'm. It means the same thing, but if you're trying to shadow and read at the same time, it's not perfect. I'm an English teacher, not an ornithologist. The next one, in my humble opinion. Oh, Alex, that's good. In my humble opinion, and sometimes in texting, you might see this. You're texting in English. Sometimes you will see that acronym and that stands for in my humble opinion. In my humble opinion, they're the same. Yeah, me too. Alex, you and I agree. Hmm. This might be a better question for, or I think this is a statement actually. No question here. 
an amphibious animal, a frog. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Frogs would be amphibious, wouldn't they? They go in the water. Nice job, Harry. Whew. I was a little worried. English teacher, not uh, an ornithologist. That makes sense to me, though. All right, the next one. Birds of prey. Birds of prey. Now, some birds eat nuts. We're going to talk about nuts in a minute. But some birds eat eat other animals and that's when we talk about birds of prey birds of prey you may be wondering hey what's prey well if you look at the bottom i have a definition for you prey are small animals that get eaten by larger animals that's pretty much now look at the two different spellings of prey one has an e in it one has an A in it. So if you're speaking, the great thing about speaking doesn't matter how it's spelled, right? Doesn't matter. But if you're ever taking a test like the TOEFL or IELTS, you might need to know the difference between the spellings. So sometimes we have homophones in English. You probably hate these things just as much as native English speakers hate them. Sometimes you spell the word wrong. But if you look here, prey, little animals that get eaten by larger animals. And then prey, depending on your religion, you know, prey, so maybe you put your hands together. That's what we're talking about when we have the P-R-A-Y. All right, so let's, uh, let's do a little shadowing practice with that sentence down there. Two sentences. Prey are small creatures that get eaten by larger creatures. Prey has more to do with religion. Hope that helps. Hope that helps. Could be a little confusing there. There you go, man. There you go. Answering the questions. Answering the questions. Hey, C Cecilia's in here. What's going on, Cecilia? Hey, if you could send me a private message on Instagram or whatever, I let... I messed up on a drawing and I, I owe you something. I owe you something. Yeah. Let's see. Platypus. Yes. Audie the ties. Hey, teacher, can we just say platypus? Yes, I think so. I don't think there's another animal in English that's a platypus besides the duck billed platypus. So I say yes. Platypus. Yeah, I think so. I think so. Yes. Yes. All right, next one. Where are we here? Wing. Wing. Now, here's an interesting word in English. Birds have wings, right? Birds have wings. That's good. That's, that helps them fly. But I've got a sentence here somewhere. Hmm. But... Planes, they can also have wings. And bees, they have wings. So oftentimes, a wing helps something fly. A wing helps something fly. Now, we have a couple terms here. You could take somebody under your wing. If you take somebody under your wing, you guide them. You help them. So as you know, I'm a teacher. And um, every year, there are new teachers. So I'm in my 40s. Sometimes we get teachers in their 20s. And uh, sometimes they don't know what they're doing. Sometimes they could use a little help. They could use a little guidance. So me, as a more experienced teacher, I might take one of these new teachers under my wing. Help them out a little bit. Maybe you are a really experienced English speaker. You've been learning English for a number of years and you have a friend that is just starting to learn English. You could take them under your wing. You could help them out. You could guide them. And if they are just learning English, if you have a friend, you know, share the channel with them. Hey, did you like 
Did you like the lesson? If you're learning English, do you mind liking the lesson? It helps other people find it. Now, another thing you might hear, it's a little slang, uh, wing it. Somebody might wing it. Let's get this picture of a wing back up. Somebody might just wing it. That means they are doing something without preparing. Now, I did not just wing this lesson. It might seem like it, but I actually prepared some sentences. I prepared some slides. So I did not wing this English lesson as a teacher. But let's say you're going on a flight. You're going to be flying somewhere. You don't want your pilot to just wing it. I'm hoping that, you know, you sit down in your seat. The pilot usually welcomes everybody on the plane. Hey, this is your pilot today. We're going to be flying to San Diego. Hopefully we'll have a safe flight. The weather when you get there. You hope the pilot doesn't come on the speaker and say, hey, folks, today uh, I'm just going to wing it. I've never flown before. Let's just see what happens. Like, no, you don't want your pilot to just wing it. You want them to be prepared. You want them to be experienced. Wing it. Um, if you have an English test coming up, I, mean, I wouldn't think you want to just wing it. I would think you would want to study before your test. If you don't study at all and you kind of don't care, you could just wing it and you'll probably fail. Probably, probably. So if there are any questions on what wing it means, leave them in the chat. Yeah, question. Are falcons and hawks the same? Remember, I am not an ornithologist. But to me, yeah, I think they are the same. Birds of prey means predators. Okay. Constantine, the prey, that's the thing that gets eaten. Prey gets eaten. Predators eat prey. Hope that makes sense. You want to be the predator. You don't want to be the prey because that means you die. Predator, prey. Good question. Good question. Oh, Yawin, that's very nice. My husband always takes me under his wings. So he's always protecting you, guiding you. I bet you, I bet you take him under your wings sometimes too. I know in, uh, with Jamie, who's my wife, and in our relationship, you know, sometimes I'll take her under my wing. Maybe I know something a little bit better. Um, you know, sometimes she takes me under her wing because she just knows something better. When we first got together, I could drive a car. I knew how to drive a car. But when you have the uh, the stick shift, when it's not an automatic, when it's a standard, it's where you have to shift the gears yourself. A little bit of car talk here, car vocabulary. She knew how to drive a stick. That's what we call it in English. I did not know how to drive a stick. She took me under her wing for a few weeks and taught me how to drive a stick. Yeah, Constantine, you're welcome. Arone, how are you? Welcome, my friend. Oh my gosh. Hansa, the birds. There is a famous American movie. It's correct. A very old movie. It's in black and white. It's not in color, but it's called The Birds. And even though it is an old movie, it is still pretty scary. Sometimes when I watch an old movie, I'm like, that looks kind of lame. We're going to talk about lame in a minute. That looks kind of weak. It's not very good. But the birds, there's a woman that has to go into a telephone booth. You young people in here probably don't even know what telephone booths are. She has to go into a telephone booth. And then all of these, I think they're seagulls, start attacking her and breaking the windows. And It's like, oh my gosh, scary stuff. Thank you, Hansa. Yeah, that's a good movie, The Birds. All right, the next one here, feathers. 
I think Ario mentioned feathers earlier. Feathers. Yeah, you don't want to just wing it. All right, let's get rid of that because we're talking about feathers now. Feathers, and we have a term. Birds of a feather flock together. Well, if you think of a wing, not on a plane, not on a bird, uh, sorry, not on a bee, but a bird, one of those, the little things that make up a wing, English phrasal verb, the little things that make up a wing, yeah, we call those feathers. That's what they look like. Now, my parents would often tell me this, birds of a feather flock together. Has anybody heard this English saying before? Just let me know in the chat. Yes, no. Have you heard birds of a feather flock together? My parents would say this all the time. And that means, hey, TS, what's going on? And that means you are exactly like your friends. So if your friends are bad people, you will be bad. So hang out with good people. Birds of a feather flock together. Ooh. So Alex has not heard it. Never, Veronica. All right. So it is a little bit of an older term. Young people these days, teenagers, they will probably not use birds of a feather. But if you are in your 40s or 50s or 60s, this is something you might hear from people your same age in the United States. Birds of a feather flock together. So if you if you have a friend who is hanging out with someone you think is bad and is not good for them, you could say, hey, man, you know, birds of a feather flock together. Be careful. That person is bad news. You want to not hang out with them anymore. Birds of a feather. Oh, Alex is not. All right. Wait, what? All right. So lots of no's. Okay. Audie the Tide. This is a great question about predator. Can we say predator for hunter? Right. Um, I probably wouldn't just because predator is mostly for animals, mostly for animals. Now, this is not a fun topic, of course, but you know, sometimes we have to learn everything in English. You might hear for people though, if somebody is a predator, they will prey on, okay, so English phrasal verb there, they will prey on weaker people. You might hear child predator or somebody who attacks women. You know, these are criminals. These are, these are horrible, horrible people. But if you're reading in the news, you might hear something like child predator. That is somebody who likes to hurt children in different ways. Many predator for people. It will be not just a one-time thing. They have hurt or abused many people and it's people who are weaker than them. So if you ever use predator with a human, they are like a really bad person. They try to hurt people who are weaker than them. Like the stuff they do would put them in prison, put them in jail. Okay. Hope that helps. Great question. Great question. All right. What do we got next here? Birds of a feather. I think we talked about the next one. We talked about wing it. The next one, uh, hopefully it's duck. Yes. Good. The next one is duck. And I have something here and we're talk about presidents too. So you may know these animals in English. These are ducks. And you know, the weird thing about ducks is I think the men, the male, the boys, they're prettier than the ladies, than the girls, than the females. Take a look. The one, I'll get rid of this. The one with the green and the yellow bill, that's the boy duck, right? That's the male. And then in the back there, kind of just brown, that's the lady. Usually, I think in most animals, the ladies 
are prettier. Oh, you know what we didn't talk about? We didn't talk about peacocks. That's one animal where the men, the boys, prettier. So here's going to be, uh, try to pull a peacock here. Bird. I don't know the peacock. I mean, I know you have seen a peacock. But let's see, what's this? Oh, let's look at look at Wikipedia here. I'm sure they won't mind if I share their page for a second. Look at that. Now that's a peacock. And that's a boy. And they are prettier also. Peacock. But the ducks, you know, the boys, they're a little bit prettier, I think. But we do have a term in English called lame duck. And you will often hear this with presidents. So let's look down at the bottom. What is a lame duck? Lame duck describes someone who is leaving a job but hasn't left yet. Lame duck president. So the way it works with presidents, we elect them or we pick them in November every four years. So in 2024, there will be a presidential election. Let's say Joe Biden, he's still alive. Let's say Joe Biden in 2024 loses. He will be a lame duck until the next person takes the job. And that is not until January. So for almost two months, we have a lame duck president. That person is leaving. They're still president, but they're going to be leaving in two months because they lost. Sometimes a president can only run for two terms for eight years. So we have a a lame duck president sometimes when a person can't run anymore. You, You might have a lame duck as a boss. Maybe they already put in their two week notice and you know, they're leaving So it's not like they can really do anything to you. Be careful. Be careful. They might be able to, but lame duck president. If you ever hear that in the news, hopefully you will know what that is. It is someone who will not be president again, and we know who is taking their place. Let me read that sentence one more time in case you want to practice shadowing. Lame duck describes someone who is leaving a job but hasn't left yet. Lame duck president. All right. Let me check the chat. Hey, Abraham. I gave you a shout out there. Give you a shout out a little while ago. Welcome, Abraham. Welcome. You are a uh, channel member. And I talked about how you have been with the channel for a long time. Oops, I'm trying to get you. There you go. Abraham. Abraham. Welcome, my friend. Welcome. Lame duck. If you have any questions about lame ducks, let me know. I will answer them. Pigeon. Marco, hope you're doing well. Let's talk about, let's talk about ducks one more time here before we get rid of this picture. What can happen is... If there are a lot of ducks in a pond, usually it's a small body of water, a pond, you can get something called duck itch. In English, we call it duck itch. And that is when the birds go to the bathroom a lot in the water and it hurts your skin. It might turn red. We would probably say, Your skin is irritated, irritated. So duck itch can happen. My friend, a couple years ago, his kids got duck itch and their skin is very itchy for a couple days. It's not fun. It's hard to sleep. Duck itch. I think they're, they're pretty birds, but they can be a nuisance. Remember we learned that word, uh, About a half an hour ago, they can be a nuisance, a little problem. Next one. I love this bird, the loon. We have loons here in Maine. 
They make a beautiful sound. They look a little bit like a duck, but they are bigger than ducks. Now, if you have ever heard, okay, rubber ducks. Hey, I did a lesson on rubber ducks not too long ago, Alex. It was rubber duck day here in the United States, national rubber duck day. All right. Uh, yeah, Ibrahim, thank you so much. Yeah, hey, Ario. Yeah, the news, I let's talk about this for a second because um, as some of you know, I have been studying Italian for almost three years, right? Um, a couple minutes a day, usually 15 minutes to a half an hour a day. It's been slow for me, but the news, I was reading a news article this morning about a guy named William Shatner and he went to space. It's like the news is very difficult. It is very difficult. I agree. Don't feel bad. Hey, I think even some, you know, native English speakers have trouble with the news. Some, you know, not the, not the really educated ones, but yeah, the news is written at a high level. And so, and so in watching it too, it's at a high level. Loon. Let's talk about Loon here. Now be careful with this. Okay. Because loony or a loon can have two different meanings. If someone is losing their mind, going crazy, we sometimes call them loony. Be careful. It's kind of rude. So if you ever hear of like, ah, you know, somebody is getting older, you might hear, oh, you know, my dad, he just turned 80. I don't know if he's all there. He's getting a little loony. So if somebody isn't all there, they're losing their mind, they're becoming a little loony, means they're forgetting things, they're a little slower. So be careful. Loony might describe someone who is a little crazy um, or a lot crazy. So if you ever hear that, be careful. It can also mean just silly though. Like a little kid could be kind of loony, you know, just acting kind of silly. So we have a couple ways that we use loon besides the bird. So be aware if you ever hear that a lot of times you can tell by the tone of how somebody is saying it. So mm, he's a little loony probably losing their mind. Oh, he's so loony. No, just another way to say silly loony. You might hear that. You might hear that. And if you ever go to Canada, I don't know if Amina is still here, but she lives in Canada. And of course, everybody knows Bob, the Canadian who doesn't like that guy. He's a great guy. Great English teacher. If you've never seen his channel. I can't believe you haven't, but if you haven't, you know, check out Bob, the Canadian. Lots of good English lessons there. But if you are in Canada, a loony is a dollar coin. It's a coin worth a dollar because on it, it has a loon. It has a bird, the loon. And uh, they also have toonies. Toonies. Let me see. Those are spelled like this. Toonies. T O O N I. E S needs telling me it's spelled wrong, but a toonie is a coin worth two dollars, even though we spell two T W O. But toonies, loonies, and toonies, those are coins worth a dollar and two dollars in Canada. Oh, you're on the computer now. Can you can you at people? Can you at people? Listen. Yeah, and Ibrahim says um, even the news is difficult in his own language. Yeah. Very formal and advanced Arabic. Yeah, in English. So they say that the newspaper is written at a fifth grade level. No, 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 no. Sorry. Seventh grade level. So that would be middle school. But Talo, how are you? Brazil is in the house. Welcome. Yeah, so it's okay. If you can read the news in English, 
or listen to the news in English or watch the news in English, you're pretty good. Congratulations. All right, let's get into the nuts for a second. Now, hey, Madi, what's going on? If everyone could write in the chat, what is their favorite nut? Now, if you don't know the name of your favorite nut in English, who cares? I mean, you won't be able to answer this question, but sometimes we just say nuts for whatever. Peanuts, cashews, almonds, walnuts, pecans, pecans. You know, if you're just learning English, just knowing the word nut is fine. Believe me. If you happen to know the name of your favorite nut, put it in the chat. Maybe I'll talk about it. My favorite nut is the cashew by far. These things were always a treat in my house growing up. A treat is something you don't get very often. It's special. And cashews were a treat because they're expensive. My parents, you know, didn't have a lot of money. I never went hungry. I I was never starving. But we splurged when we had cashews. When you splurge on something, it means you spend a little bit more money to enjoy something. So you might splurge on a hotel. Jamie and I did that a couple weeks ago. You know, it was a little bit of money. but We had some fun. We had to save up for it. In my house growing up around the holidays, we only got cashews around the holidays and it was a treat for me but i love these things little expensive here in the united states maybe expensive where you live but english word right there cashews if you've ever seen those nuts they're so good they're kind of smooth kind of smooth love them craving some cashews right now if you're craving food means you want it you can't have it man craving a candy bar right now. Man, craving some cashews right now. So these were always a treat. Look at that. I think I think Yawen told me that too. She she's a big, <laughs> she's a big fan of cashews. These nuts. Hey, hey, this is a family channel. Aroni. Nah, I'm not even going to go there. That's funny though. That's funny. Hey, Tuesday, Thursday. No. Um, yeah, I always get confused. Um, the only thing I can think of is this. We start the work week on Monday. Tuesday is the second day of the week. Usually the second day of the work week, if that help, helps you. Tuesday, you know, it's spelled a little differently, but Tuesday comes right after Monday, like Thursday's the fourth week. I mean, fourth day of the week. Hopefully that helps, Italo. Hopefully that helps. Somebody please kick Aroni out. He's a family channel. Oh, the chestnut. Yeah, the chestnut's a a nut. Yeah, we won't talk about it today, but yeah, the chestnut. All right. What did I receive as treats during my childhood? Uh, The cashews were pretty good cash you know candy bar here here and there yeah alex i'd be indulging myself i'd be splurging on it and when you indulge it means you know maybe a little expensive but you're giving yourself a treat you're giving yourself a treat amina's still here she knows loonies and toonies the next one is peanut i think when most people in the united states think of nuts their first thought will be peanuts They are very common here in the United States. And if you look at that sandwich right there, that is what, (coughs) excuse me, that is what a lot of children will bring for their lunch in school. The PB&J, the PB&J, PB&J is a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. It is very cheap to make. You just need peanut butter and you need jelly 
or jam. Maybe there's a small difference there, but jelly is a little bit smoother. You can have grape jelly. You can have apple jelly. You can have strawberry jelly. I am a grape jelly man. My mom made me grape jelly and peanut butter sandwiches growing up. We never had the strawberry. We never had the apple jelly. So I am a grape jelly man. I like the grape. Pro tip, if you're ever wanting to make a peanut peanut butter and jelly or a PB&J, pro tip. This is from a guy who has eaten and I've made a lot of peanut butter jelly and sandwiches in my life. Here we go. Slather. I thought that might be a new verb for you. You can slather peanut butter on the bread. If you go to the beach, you can slather lotion on your body to protect yourself from the sun. Slather. Slather both sides of bread with peanut butter. If not, by lunch, your jelly will have bled through the bread. Thought that might be kind of hard to say. Pro tip, slather both sides of bread with peanut butter. If not, by lunch, your jelly will have bled through the bread. So you'll start to see the jelly coming through the bread. If you have grape jelly, your bread will be purple by lunch. Put peanut butter on both sides. Pro tip, I'm not just an English teacher, I'm a cook too. I don't just teach English lessons. You will learn how to cook on this channel. No, no, you won't. Please don't take my advice for cooking. But peanut butter and jelly, I can handle that. And the next one, pecans. Or are they pecans? Pecans, pecans. If you're in the northern part of the United States, you will probably hear this nut pronounced pecan. If you go to the south, Alabama, Florida, Georgia, those states, you will hear it pecan, 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 pecan. And um, pecans, that's the way I pronounce it, pecans are often made into pies And we often have these during the holidays. Pecan pie. Love it, love it, love it. It's basically some crust, some pecans, and a lot of sugar. A lot of sugar. That is it. That is it for the lesson on birds and nuts. Hope you've enjoyed. Hope you learned a little something. Constantine, no, it's not Chef Brent. No, (laughs) no. Please know I will make something else, I think, on the channel to learn some more cooking terms. But um, it was great to hear all of the people who have uh, made Miniman or Shashuka. And they gave me some tips. Next time, I'm going to add onions. Ooh, I learned in Turkey, adding onions to your Miniman is like adding pineapples to your pizza. A lot of people are torn. Hey, Onions, you need them. No, never put onions in minimum. So it's fun. It's fun. Hopefully everybody, yeah, we didn't learn about macadamia nuts. We didn't learn about Brazil nuts. We didn't learn about walnuts. I thought three nuts were enough. All right. Hope everybody has a great rest of your day. I hope everybody is safe and all that stuff. Thank you so much for watching.